So, so let me just see. I should probably do this off camera, but it, it kind of adds to the authenticity of it. Um, <laughs> How's it going and welcome to Whiskey Whims with me Stuart. Today we're continuing on with the Not For The Faint Of Heart series uh, which was a tasting set up by North East Whiskey Association Society and I couldn't attend the, the tasting virtually because I was at work but I still bought the samples and I've got them to go through. So today we've got number three which is Lindor's Abbey. Uh, it's a Lowland whiskey, they're from Fife uh, they have just released not too long ago their uh, inaugural whiskey. Uh, I've got my cheat sheet again. There was 12,750 bottles. Uh, they look for a, a long... I'm going to have to open this with my teeth again. Uh, what was that? Yeah, that won't pour. This is like um, an aftershave bottle almost. <laughs> it just drips out. So let me just... See, I should probably do this off camera, but it, it kind of adds to the authenticity of it. Um, Oh, yeah, what was I saying? Lindo's Abbey, yeah, so they, they aim for a long fermentation, uh, I think longer fermentation. Does that add, I think, shorter fermentation? You get a lot of fruitier characters through, a lot of like floral, more perfume, if I'm right. Uh, I'm just trying to think of Daft Mill and what Francis said. I'm sure he said they aim for kind of short, or is it a short distillation to get it? Anyway, they do a long fermentation, whatever that means. Um, they're aiming for long fermentation. Based in Fife, like I said, we'll get down to the whiskey because um, I don't know too much. I don't know anything. All I know is what it smells like and what it tastes like. And sometimes I don't even know what that is. Uh, so yeah, we'll get down to this. Ah, so this is... Um, yeah, so unlike the Dornock that we've, uh, we've reviewed, we've looked at, but much like the White Peak, it's got that wash back, um, sorry, mash tun smell to it. Being in that room in the mash tun, uh, the bubbling kind of beer uh, scents, that, that, it's got this again, rather than the Dornock smell. The Dornock was quite dissimilar from the White Peak and quite dissimilar from this Lindor's Abbey. <sighs> yeah. It's a little, I'm a little mentally, yeah, quite minty. It's uh, my, <laughs> my my girlfriend recently got this. Um, try to think what it's called. I think it's called Four Head. Uh, so the number four and head, and it's levo menthol. That's the active ingredient. In it. You rub it on your head. It's almost like Vicks for your throat. You rub it on your head, and it's uh, gives a kind of tingling sensation and cools and soothes to to relieve headaches. Um, and if you smell that forehead stick, I don't know how many people have got access to smelling this stick if you've got one in your cupboard. It kind of smells like that. It's, it's mentally, it's um, it's not quite as powerful as Vicks. Uh, so Vicks Vapor Rub, but it's still quite mentally um, and quite minty. Which gives this, and it, it's bizarre, it gives it a real cooling effect. I'm sure I said with the Donut, the Donut was like a... Um, something cooking in the oven, nice and hot, nice and warm, giving you that warm sensation. This is giving you a nice cooling, soothing sensation, if that makes sense, on the nose. I suppose all the senses are uh, interlinked, so I don't sound like a complete lunatic when I say this smells like a soothing sensation. Or maybe I do. Yeah, I can't get away from the mintiness of it, the, the freshness. It is very fresh. Very... It's a little, a little perfumey. Um, obviously, perfume you're supposed to same with aftershave and that you're supposed to spray a couple sprays. Uh, you're not supposed to lather yourself in it. But if you imagine you've walked by someone who is completely covered in perfume, it's to the point where you can't actually smell the scents of the perfume. It's more just attacking you. Uh, with with the strength of the perfume. That is what this is like. It kind of takes away from the scents and it's just attacking you with the perfume. It's not alcoholic um, attack. <laughs> it's a perfume attack, if that makes sense. Uh, if I was to, yeah, it's, it's a perfume attack. I don't know what that means. Please bear with me. Uh, I, I swear this is a legit channel for whiskey tasting, smelling, reviewing. 
Yeah, I'm really enjoying this actually on the nose. I've not had the Lindor's Abbey. I had the or did were they the one that done the Aqua Vitae? The um, uh, it was wasn't quite gin, wasn't quite whiskey, but it was in between. Uh, they released it just before they released their inaugural release. I think that was Lindor's Abbey. I enjoyed that. This is nothing like that, but I enjoyed that, and I'm enjoying this. That this smell, um, it makes me want to try their whiskey on the nose. Obviously, we'll get out of the palate, I suppose. Mm. Hmm. That's really sweet, and it is actually caramelly. Yeah, caramelly, biscuity, malty. Um, that's cracking. That's uh, that is. Hmm. Chewing on a bit of barley or something like chewing on wheat. More like yeah, barley or wheat, it's wheat of it's it's um, yeah, malted. That's really nice. <laughs> um, once again, that there's a, a perfumey kind of um, I'm trying to think it rather than just say perfume. Let's say there's Parma Violet. Um, my, my kidney's feeling a bit sore. I've had too much new make. I better add some water. Um, I'm probably ruining my body right now with all this new make. Uh, that's a lot of water. I think I've said previously, if you check out the other videos, um, I'm not sure what the ABDs are on these whiskies. I reckon they're not quite above 70%. I reckon they're probably just about uh, 60 to 65, possibly verging on 70. But I don't think they would have released them out to um, the Northeast Whiskey Association Society at the, the full um, still strength. I think they might have watered them down a little bit. Oh, no way. Right, on the nose of this, with the water, it's just brought out a real cinnamon, clove, um, all those kind of, what are they called? Not herb spices, it's, it's brought out a lot of spice. Which I thought was predominantly from sherry casks, I thought that was from the cask rather than the, the distillate, but I mean, once again, I might be wrong with the Dornock. I said I'm not sure what, what, what type of style they're aiming for. I know that um, uh, Linder's Abbey's Lowland, but I'm not sure what type of style they're aiming for. I've not had their official release. I don't know what it tastes like. I don't know what it, experience you get from it. But from this, with the water, the nose, I'm definitely getting cloves. It's very spice-driven here. Very Unlike the Dornock, where it was spicy like peppery, this is spicy um, fruit cake. That's what caught me off guard when I first said, oh, um, it was like Christmas cake. Yeah, quite fantastic. Um, quite an experience. We'll try the, the palette with the water. Mm. Not, not, not as great with the water in the palette. Uh, just maybe too much water on the palette. It really... Exposed the nose and changed the nose, but in the palate it's just kind of dumbed it down. That that initial sweet uh, caramel flavour that I got that that was there, it's it's just completely um, dissipated and, and disappeared. Uh, so I'm, I don't think I'm going to try and explain what I'm getting in the the, the palate because I think I've maybe drowned it a little bit with the water. But overall, um, I maybe need to get a bottle of Lindor's Abbey. Uh, their uh, initial release. I think it's quite available. I don't think it's hard to get a hold of, so I, I might be tempted to. That this is quite an experience. But once again, like I said, it, it depends on how they've cast it, how they how they actually present it. I think they do non-chill filter, no added colouring, which is good. Um, but it will be interesting to see the the, the differences or the similarities with uh, cask influence uh, because this. I'm not going to drink the rest of this, uh, but because I think I've ruined it with the water. But on the nose, the, the cloves, that, that Christmas cake, this this is fascinating. It's uh, piqued my interest for sure. Just like the Dornock and even like the White Peak. I think this is a good um, avenue to go down for whiskey, distillers, whiskey companies, especially new um, and up and coming uh, companies to put out their new make, just let people get a feel of it, let people explore with it, add water uh, and see what they think. Uh, and I think that's what they should do in all tours as, as well, is like give you a taste of the new make, just see how it is initially um, and see how much it changes. Because 
so far from the three that I've tried, I, I want to try them all. It's um, definitely piqued my interest with all three. Uh, so I said I was going to rate them after the end of each kind of review or analysis. Uh, so I'd probably say Lindor's Abbey um, would be second. It would be Dornock first. I really enjoyed the Dornock uh, Highland characteristics. So it'd be Dornock first, Lindor's Abbey, and then White Peak. Maybe in a little bit biased with White Peak because it's uh, English, but I seem to be thinking the, the White Peak didn't reveal as much as the Dornock or the Linders Abbey. Uh, so once again, thanks for watching. I've been Stuart, this has been Whiskey Wims. I'll see you later.